Look, what am I doing? Am I doing this because I want to make sure that the Jewish people don't disappear? No, the Jews cannot disappear. It's not possible. I just don't want you to give up your seat on the bus. The bus is going with or without you. Uh, caller, you're live on the air. Uh, please tell us your name, where you're coming from, and what your New Testament non-war question is for the day. <laughs> welcome. Hello, I'm Paul from Virginia. Paul, welcome. And the question I have uh, in Acts, when we have Gamaliel speaking, uh, this was after the apostles had been imprisoned and an angel released them and then brought before the council. And Gamaliel said, advised that they not be real concerned, but to give them time, because if what they're teaching is of God, then it would be, they would be acting against God. But if it was something of man, like some others he mentioned, then in time it would just go away. So what I was wondering, in Judaism, how long did this actually go on? The Gentiles, or non-Jewish people, took Christianity and developed it and, you know, say that it's of God and that they're perpetrating it. But on the Jewish side, how long did it actually last uh, in time? The Book of Acts uh, is written by whoever wrote the Book of Luke, and the Book of Acts is the author's view of how the church continued after Jesus' death. And it also moves the church from a church that was the Peter version of the church to the Paul version of the church. So whereas in the early in the book of Acts, Peter is a, a very important figure and his view that you a Christian still would have to keep the Torah if you're Jewish. The book of Acts is really devoted to Paul and that Paul's views are correct and he is vindicated completely. So this becomes very critical in Acts chapter 5. We are – Gamaliel comes into view. Gamaliel was a Tano, first century Tano who lived in the first half of the first century. And we are told that Christians are brought before Gamaliel, like what do we do with them? harm them not. Now, at this stage in the book of Acts, early Krishna thing, we have to keep Torah. We have to keep, you know, we have to observe Torah. Now, I, the questioner is asking the question, well, perhaps the most primitive iteration of Christianity is one where Jesus is a Torah-observing individual who encourages others to be Torah-observing. Well, that is conventional thinking. It is the methodology for concluding that um, is there. It's just not rigorous. You presuppose many things, and I understand why. But they're not. The methodology is not strong. But you can do that. And that's mainstream. Mainstream stuff is that. If you want to know about the real Jesus, he was a Pharisaic Jew, Torah observant Jew, and wanted everyone else to keep the Torah. And if you want to find that, go to the Sermon of the Mount. That's Matthew 5 through 7, where Jesus, we're told, says, keep the Torah and anyone who changes it. And if you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, so it's completely Pharisaic. He doesn't say the Sadducees, but the Pharisees. He written oral Torah. So Jesus, in essence, was a religious Jew, Orthodox, really Orthodox, uppercase O, oral written Torah. And the New Testament has Jesus saying that the Pharisees sit in the seat of Moses. No one has a question about the oral Torah. All this stuff you taught about rabbinic Judaism, they don't know what you're talking about. 
Because the Pharisees, for which Jesus was a part and Paul was putatively a part, was, that was the gold standard. Okay. Now, now, that changes dramatically in the book of Acts where Paul's ideas are vindicated. Paul is going to shoot very far in his own letters where he's saying we're done with the law, ritual law. He's going to abuse Tanakh. Don't ask what he's going to do. He can do that in his own letters, in his own writings. He's going to do that. Where he's going to encourage Jews and non-Jews not to keep ritual law. Paul never tells people to commit adultery or murder or anything like that. But ritual law, done, finished. Jesus is the end of the law to everyone who believes. Forget about it. It's done. Jews shouldn't keep it. It's like a dead spouse. Read Romans 7. Okay, let's get back here. So the book of Acts is divided between – it starts off with Christians who believe in Jesus who are – we are told are Torah-observant Christians. Um, they didn't call themselves Christians, so get over that. Uh, the word Christian appears three times in the New Testament and Christians don't use it. Non-Christians use it. But that's not important. We're using conventional language here. So what happens is they're brought in front of Gamaliel. Gamaliel was a Tana, a very important figure who was in the Mishnah. Was the giant, he was Einstein of his time. He was Albert Einstein. Okay. Now, we are going to be told that Paul was a disciple of Gamaliel. Paul is never going to say that, but that's found in the book of Acts. Gamaliel comes off really well in the New Testament because if you want to have Paul's, Paul look good, you, his teacher must be really good. Okay? Now, here's where we get to this intriguing part. So the question is put to Gamaliel, like, what do we do with these Christians? Do we harm them? Do we stop them or not? Now, remember, who – are we told Gamaliel is looking at what kind of Christians? Well, he's, he's looking at pronomian Christians, not antinomian Christians. What does that mean? He's looking at Christians that believe that you have to keep Torah and you can't sit and eat with Gentiles and you can't, can't do any of that stuff. You understand? So they're pronomian. It's a fancy term, but they're for Torah observance. What part of the Torah? Ritual Torah. Got it? Okay. So, so these are early Christians, listen very carefully, who are pronomian. So Gamaliel, we're told that I don't believe this ever happened. It, something remotely resembling it might have happened, but I don't believe it. it. There's no methodology that this passes. And this, there, there are method, there are reasons why to think it didn't happen, but, there, but we'll just play what if. So what if that really happened or in some way this has um, – this is historical? Well, this um, stimulates problems, doesn't solve any problem for Christians. What Gamaliel would have been saying in Acts chapter 5 is, again, what he has in front of him are Jews who believe that you have to keep Torah and believe in Jesus. Got it? So what he's saying is, well, if this movement is of God, then killing Peter or whoever you have in front of you, that's not going to help you. Like it's going to go on with them or without them, so don't harm them. If it's not of God, it won't continue. What do you mean? So let's go a little deeper and just think very carefully. Idolatry or religions that are not – of God cannot continue with the Jewish people. It must disappear. All the Jews who became Christians in the first century and second century, their grandchildren are gone. They've disappeared. It can't continue. See Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. The covenant is only given to Jews who keep the Torah and love Hashem. No other way. And therefore, all the Jews who are survived to this day, identifying as Jews, have to be the great-grandchildren of Jews who rejected Christianity, rejected the every other, every iteration, every heresy, they had to have rejected it. 
they had to believe in the oral Torah. All the many, many Jews who reject the oral Torah, who were Sadducees, the Sadducees are gone, who became, they're all gone. The only way you're going to be a Karite today is you do it online. They're basically all gone. So what he's saying is a very simple thing. So what I would do is I would, um, what I wanted to do is go, fine, we'll accept the story. We'll accept this putative story about Gamliel. Gamliel is then saying that a, a Judaism that's heretical will, will fall of its own and it cannot continue. And in fact, the movements, the iterations of Christianity that indeed fell – and they're gone and they've disappeared are those iterations of Christianity that they said keep the Torah. For example, where are the Ebionites? They're gone. Again, like other groups, you can go online and become an Ebionite. Where are the Nazarene Christians? We know about them. Why? Because their writings survived. They didn't survive. We know about them because their opponents preserved their views. They, these were all people that held the view that we are told, Gamliel said, if it's of God, it will last, and if it's not of God, it will disappear, and they disappeared. The only iteration of Christianity that survived is one that rejected the observance of Torah, that adopted pagan notions of vicarious atonement. They all they all went because that became an idolatry. Idolatry there has to be idolatry in the world. There has to be false religions in the world until Mashiach comes. Do you understand that? The world must contain false teachings until Mashiach comes or else there's no free will. If every other religion but the true religion of the, that was conveyed to the prophets disappeared, then you would have no free will and virtue would be impossible. So there must be some temptation. So idolatry, no problem at all. That, not only no problem, they must be preserved. World religions that are wrong, fundamentally wrong, must be preserved until Mashiach comes. What happens at the end is that all the world will realize they made a mistake and will grab to the Jew and say, take us with you. We heard there's, that God is with you, Zechariah 8.23. So what Gamaliel is saying, if we accept Acts 5 is, oh, you think you're going to preserve an iteration that we believe in Yeshua HaMashiach, and we have to, I'm using the messianic lingo, and we are Torah observant messianics using the modern parlance that's used among some Christians that are messianic Torah. That will not happen. Not happen. You are going to fall away. And the Ebionites, the Nazarenes, all disappeared. They disappeared from the planet. It doesn't mean that throughout the ages there were not little sects that some came up and said, where them? They were crushed by the church. And the Jews who kept the Torah, written in oral Torah, utterly rejected the tenets of Christianity. They're here today. You'll meet many Jews today who are not observant. Rahman al-Sun. Many, many Jews who don't keep Torah today. Of course. But they're the great, great grandchildren of Jews who did. And if they, they're the last generation. If they don't do tshuva, they're going to disappear. They're going to marry out. They're going to convert out. They're going to be gone. Look, what am I doing? Am I doing this because I want to make sure that the Jewish people don't disappear? No. The Jews cannot disappear. It's not possible. I just don't want you to give up your seat on the bus. The bus is going with or without you. Why am I talking to you? Because I want the nation of Israel to be saved? No. The nation of Israel can't be destroyed. Cannot. There's a covenant. Hashem made a covenant with the B'nai Israel. America has no such covenant. Australia has no such covenant. Canada has no. B'nai Israel have a covenant. That's it. Okay? And what I am saying to you, sons and daughters of Hashem, you were born from above, not from below. Follow your head, not your heart. Follow your mind, not your emotions. Disabuse yourself of all these Christian ideas. Why? So that the so that the Jews could be no. We'll go on with or without you. I want you to have a place. I want you to be a part of it. Not chas not heaven forbid, to be the opponents 
of the God of Israel. Do you understand, sweethearts? So if we accept Acts 5, that's what Gamaliel is saying. Oh, your iteration, that's never going anywhere. And what's the iteration he's referring to? And that is the Ebionite version, the Torah observant uh, Christians, believers in Jesus. Oh, that will disappear because you're saying this is Judaism and, oh, no, that that's going to be gone. You want to have Gentiles who are worshiping trinities and a, a hypostatic union? That for sure will go on, will continue on, but not this. This will have to disappear if it's not of God. Do I believe the story is historical? No, but that's what comes out of the story. Thank you for your question. If you enjoy these programs, please like and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.